Now, the latest as of 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, Edward. Uh, 1 p.m. Central, or 1800 Zulu, the center of Tropical Storm Edward, was located near 28.3 north, 91.0 west, or about 145 miles south-southeast of Lafayette, Louisiana, about 240 miles east-southeast of Galveston, Texas. Edward is moving to the west-northwest at 8 miles an hour and this general motion is expected to continue this afternoon and tonight. On the forecast track, the center of Edward will be very near the upper Texas coast or near the coast of southwestern Louisiana by Tuesday morning. Maximum sustained winds are near 45 miles an hour with higher gusts. Some strengthening is expected during the next 24 hours, and Edward could be nearing hurricane strength before reaching the coastline. Tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 45 miles from the center, and the latest minimum central pressure reported by an Air Force Reserve Unit reconnaissance aircraft was 1,001 millibars or 29.56 inches, so the pressure has come down a bit. A storm surge of 2 to 4 feet above normal tide levels can be expected in the warning area and areas of onshore winds. Edward is expected to produce total rain accumulations of 3 to 5 inches in some Louisiana coastal counties and southeastern Texas. Isolated maximum amounts of 10 inches are possible over southeast Texas. There's the first hint that this is going to be a big rainmaker for Texas. Isolated tornadoes are possible over portions of southeastern Louisiana or southwestern Louisiana and the upper Texas coast later today and tonight. Once again, 1 p.m. Central Time, it was at 28.3 north, 91.0 west, moving west northwest at 8. 45 mile an hour winds, 1,001 millibars. The next advisory will be issued by the National Hurricane Center at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. That was from forecasters Franklin and Rome. And again, uh, looking at the latest advisory coordinates, uh, as of now, uh, the, new, the new advisory pegs it south of Louisiana, but still a good 240 miles away from Galveston. And uh, even though it's moving now to the west-northwest, if you take that west-northwest motion at 8, 8 miles an hour, that's a slow motion, but the west-northwest would likely take it right near the border. So if I were in an area like Sabine Pass, I'd be watching very carefully for a potential landfall. And uh, again, it's just too early to tell, but the current coordinates are 28.3 north and... 910 west so certainly it has gained a little bit of latitude at 283 and it is now at 91.0 west so 910 and 283 on your local uh, hurricane tracking charts if you have that and uh, again just tracking the system here because it is a tenacious system and has continued pretty much straight west uh, with a little bit of a northward component and because of that it should stay over water long enough to get close to hurricane strength and that hurricane watch remains in effect west of intercoastal city to Port O'Connor, Texas. Looking at the latest radar out of Lake Charles, if I peg the center where uh, the hurricane center has it which is at uh, 283910, 2839100 uh, 910 would be right there. 910283. At that point, you're looking at a uh, center of circulation right about due south of the Louisiana coast by about 49, 50 miles, and uh, well away. If it were to move west northwest it would still be some 180 miles away from the border region of uh, say Beaumont, Orange, Port Arthur, Texas and at that point you're looking at a nine, an 8 mile an hour movement so 8 miles an hour over the course of uh, you know 20, 20 hours is still offshore so by this time tomorrow it should be moving inland but again it's not going to make landfall it doesn't look like today or tonight that should be tomorrow. Again, it's still having trouble consolidating that inner core. Once it has that inner core established, it could strengthen a little bit more. But um, based on what I see, I, I think there's a good chance it'll hit a little bit further north than the latest forecast track. The 11 a.m. track does have uh, it moving straight west, then back to the west-northwest. 
but given it's a little bit north of where it was pegged and it's moving west northwest already it may head north of Galveston more towards that uh, Anahuac, uh, Sabine Pass, Beaumont, Orange, Liberty, Texas area or Cameron, Louisiana, Holly Beach those regions right along the coastline Sabine, Sabine Pass right there looking like that could be the area now High Island if you're in High Island you want to keep an eye on it too because that's generally in the region where it's headed but again no rainfall for you yet but the rain is wrapping around and this system is getting is tightly coiled but it's going to be strengthening and as it strengthens that convection is going to continue to fire and we will see that uh, strengthening ensue and the rainfall ensue keep in mind just because this thing is uh, weak does not mean that it is uh, cannot produce rainfall we had tropical storm Allison seven years ago in Texas that wasn't even a tropical storm anymore, and that dumped uh, oh, feet of rain. It was it was a tremendous flooding in Houston and all along the Gulf Coast and up the East Coast even. So it doesn't take a strong system to produce a lot of rain, and that is the concern is that even though Edward may not be a significant storm and it may not even become a hurricane, it could still produce that rainfall and still have that onshore flow which is pretty nasty because that could create storm tides up to two to four feet so we're gonna have to deal with that but not only that the rainfall they said now in the hurricane center we could have up to maximum amounts of 10 inches in Texas 10 inches of rain that's just about a foot of rain that could be an understatement if the system's moving slowly or if a rain band sits and batters the same area so even though some areas in this uh, North Gulf Coast and the Western Gulf Coast have had a drought, you can easily take your rain deficit and make it an extreme flooding rain surplus in the blink of an eye if you uh, have this situation to where we have uh, Edward sitting and just dumping the rain relentlessly. And uh, that is not something that you want to see, no doubt about that. So again, we're still keeping an eye on... Uh, Edward here on IPR, and we're going to have coverage throughout the afternoon. By 4 p.m., we'll have Casey Newell take it over, and uh, coverage all tomorrow as landfall and after landfall, and then tomorrow night in a what looks to be a post-landfall edition of Center of Circulation, we will have Charlie Wilson, Michael Moss host the show with special guest Phil Klotzbach, and their new forecast from Colorado State comes out tomorrow and given that we are all already on our east storm for uh the fourth of august i have a feeling we're looking at a very very active season that was already forecast to be above normal and uh, that looks to be the case no doubt it looks like texas may get hit by their second storm at least impacted by it within two and a half weeks oh it was dolly july 23rd so about two weeks or so that happens look at florida florida got hit you know by a tropical storm the one day by a category four hurricane the next few years ago i mean that's that's the way mother nature works but again it's very very important that you have your hurricane plan ready because even though edward isn't anything monumentous neither was allison and that ended up being monumentous because of the rainfall and uh and it wasn't just allison alberto in 94 uh, Gordon in uh, 2000, the rainfall in the Florida West Coast, that was significant. So uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on this because you do not want to be caught off guard with flooding uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So once again, you're listening to Internet Partnership Radio. Here we're going to be right back, and when we get back, we'll have more on Edward. Stay tuned. 